How many points per course does Matt get as a handicap? What's going on everyone? Back with Road to Scale Nationals. In this series, Matt and I are preparing our vehicles to compete at Sorka Scale Nationals, which will be happening in Leesburg, Alabama at the beginning of April. And so far you've seen our progress, call it that, as we've started to prep these vehicles. And in my case, we've got the class one back here on the bench. And guess what? It's pretty much where my sole focus has been. My class two slash class three sitting here behind me with just the very smallest of progress being made, but class two has come a decent way and really starting to feel better, but still quite nervous. But I wanna go over what we've got done so far as of this point in the timeline, which is 61 days to go. So gonna rewind a little bit as I discuss some of the things that I did get completed up to this point. One of the most obvious things should be that you now see some cage work here. This is kind of where we left off last time with me discussing that the cage was about to begin and it has begun. But what we have here is 3 16th titanium rod that was TIG welded together with some titanium plate work that was done from Send Cut Send. Their website that you upload your file, they laser cut it out and ship it out to you in super super fast been really happy with that service so far now here is the start of the cage only the start you'll see that there's some pieces that need to be filled in and we'll get to that here a little bit later in the video but then beyond that after the cage work i started the first of the forged carbon fiber pieces and what you see is a front passenger fender. If you've never heard of forged carbon fiber, basically what you're doing is you're taking chopped up carbon fiber, the actual fibers themselves, and you make a mold and you lay in resin and then carbon and then more resin and you try and get it all in there as best you can and then you compression mold it and you leave it under compression for a length of time, in this case, 24 hours. And what you end up with is a part that has a very distinct look. Forged carbon fiber does not have the normal twill look of carbon fiber. Uh, instead, you end up with a, a very unique look, something that I really like and that I knew what I was going to be getting. That is the very first part that I did. And I learned a good bit from it. I'm going to take you through the process that I did. I'm not saying it's the only process or the best process. I'm going from a pretty easy to follow guide done by Easy Composites out of the UK. I bought their development kit for this and it worked really well for me at this point, but we've only got one part done. The second part is actually in a mold behind me clamped in my vise. I have the vise inside of the house because it was cold outside and it needs to cure at room temperature for 24 hours and the garage is less than what I would call room temperature. So regardless, we are making progress. We've got one finished part on the actual chassis. It's rock solid, just crazy strong. Um, and I'm really excited for that, but we're going to continue making more of those. The one that's in the mold behind me right now is actually the cowl of this. From there, I'll probably go to the windshield frame. I need to do the other side fender, the hood still, and then this rear portion. Now, the rear portion we did not have on in the last video. This was previously, you saw it in a more of a one piece type design, but what we do have is now the uh, rear design pretty close to how it will be produced. Uh, I think I may break it up a little bit still so that it you know, is a little bit easier to do in the forged carbon fiber process, but um, I'm happy with it. It doesn't have a tailgate in there right now. Tailgate likely going to be a separate piece um, and we may play around with different options for how that will be constructed. But nonetheless, uh, we're making progress in both of those. Today, what I wanted to do is take you through a little bit of my tube fabrication process because I was super happy with how this tube work went together. We had the design, we created templates from the tubes that we designed in CAD, created paper templates, and then I fabricated all of this based off of that. Now I had all of those fixtures that you saw in the last video, and all of that really worked out to become what you see here. But let's jump right into the how-to portion of the cage work, and then we'll jump right into the how-to of the forged carbon fiber. So 
Over to that. So we got a fresh stick of grade five titanium, 3 16th inch diameter. Now I have three of those templates that I discussed because there's three different bends in this tube alone. And each one of these is in a different plane. So each one has to have a slightly different template. Now from experimenting, I know that this bend is the sharpest and the bend radius shown on my CAD template is a little bit off. My bender that I'm using is a little bit tighter than this radius shows. After I did a test sample, I found that out and I know about the length that I need to calculate to compensate for that. But on top of that, I'm starting with this bend. That gives me extra length on each end to make sure that I get the best possible chance of getting the right fit for the tube. Take the titanium, we're gonna lay it on top of the print. We're gonna make sure that we have enough extra length past the end of the tube after we kind of roughly calculate it. And then we're going to mark the start point of our bend radius. Since this is solid rod tubing, we don't have to worry about kinking anything. So we're using my very simple rod bender. This is a BAC Industries rod bender. I'll find a similar one and link to it in the description below. We're gonna find the mark we made on the rod, which is right there. And then we're going to put that in the bender and we're gonna line that mark up with the center post of the rod bender. We're gonna give this a bend roughly equal to what we saw on our template. And now at this point, it may be hard to tell, but I overbent this rod maybe a degree or two. So we need to straighten it back out. There's no real magic to this. I have a wooden stool with a hole drilled in it. I usually put the rod in it, put it there and I just, put my feet on the bottom of the stool and lift up a little bit. It's just super, super slight movements. That's about as close as it gets. Now we need to go to the second bend, which is this bend here, but this is not just so easy as putting this down there and then bending this again, because this bend and this bend back here are not in the same plane. And what that means is I've got a diagram here on the side where I've got a couple of reference dimensions. It means that I need to bend this one here 13 degrees kicked off compared to the first bend. And then this one down here was about 11 degrees kicked and it's actually the opposite way. So that is what I have to tackle next. We need to do the driver's side one way and the passenger side the opposite. And we're gonna mark our start and then we're gonna note that we're starting on the side, the same side as this, so that we're gonna bend this side down. It's important to know that what start you're working with because you need to put it in the bender the correct way. And for this, we're gonna need to probably transfer that mark around to the other side of the tube. So trying to visualize this in space, I have determined that I need to have this side, the side that is the down bar or the A pillar, down by 13 degrees. I'm just using the iPhone level app, putting it on the plane by bridging the back of the case across the uh, section beyond the bend and on top of the bend. So we're gonna put it there. It should basically rest on its own and then we're gonna tilt down to 13. Okay. And now we're going to bend it. Once we have a bend started, it's easier to put it back in the bender and get it basically flat, but we need to check this against the template. And we went way too far. And that is dead on. First one, just double check how that's looking. Well within an acceptable range of this design. From here, we're gonna mark the start of the next bend. All right, so now we're gonna put this side 
of the bend from here to here up by about 12 degrees. I just kind of held my phone in place and then I used my body to move the uh, bender itself. But just visually staring down the tube, things are looking proper. I'm pretty excited. Now we just have to check against our third template ever so slightly overbent. Pretty happy with that one. Now we get the fun part of cutting this to length. A 16th to an eighth past where the actual end will be on both sides. And we're gonna mark those using the bend plane that the closest bend is in. For this, I'm using a uh, three inch electric cutoff tool. So as you can see, I already have the driver side tube in place and this one should basically be a mirror image. Now, since I've got this chassis jigged, I know where these tubes are supposed to land. This end, the back side of the C pillar, needs to get notched pretty severely to uh, land here in this back corner. The front side here will land in this pocket that is designed into the laser cut slider and along the top of the uh, cab here between the A and B pillar areas, that will sit right into this pocket in the actual fixture. And that is gonna be so spot on. It feels so good when that happens. I can't explain how excited that makes me feel. I know we did all the CAD planning and things like that, but the real world is so much different. So uh, we're in great shape to go ahead and start fish mouthing or coping this rear tube. So we're gonna show you how I do that now. I already know that this angle back here is 45 degrees. Now I know that from CAD, but you could also use a digital angle finder like this, set to about 45 degrees right now. I'm gonna show you why that's helpful. I'm gonna install these magnetic soft jaws. These are from JCL, I'll link to them in the description. Now we can hold the tubing securely Soft jaws will help from marking it up. And now we can take that angle finder and I'm just placing it next to the tube. Now I've got this rotary tool, much more powerful than a Dremel, exercise care. With this, I've got a 3 16 burr wheel in it. Uh, so it kind of looks like a knurled finish. I'll link to a tool like this and a bit like that in the description to show you. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to cope this tube by hand, basically. I feel like I wanna make myself a nicer tool, but this is surprisingly easy, even on titanium. You wanna take that cope until it's really meeting just the very tip of that backside. You don't wanna leave a flap in there at all, but we're gonna hit it with a flap disc just to take off the burrs on the end. Then we'll be ready to test fit this back into the chassis. Couldn't be happier with how that's turning out. So this part of it is solid. We have to look up here next. Now, the back side of this is landing about perfectly as well, but the front side is a little bit high. Is to be expected because like I said at the uh, beginning part, I actually cut this a little bit long. So we're gonna take just a hair off of this. It's exactly where it needs to for the roof panel. We're a hundred percent good to go and uh, we're going to tack weld this in. So we're going to give it a really good wipe down to get as many of the impurities off of it as possible. The chassis is grounded on my ground clamp back here. This is my uh, TIG welder torch. We've got a Pyrex cup. I've got six seconds of pre-flow gas and 10 seconds of post-flow. We've got our titanium filler rod. And again, this has been wiped down with the cleaner as well. Using a pair of vice grips here just to make sure that everything sits exactly flush with the tube as I want. Which is all tacked together. I can actually take this out of the jig now and we can go test fit this in the actual chassis. A 
I'm so happy. I cannot express how happy I am. I think I got it. So that gives you a pretty good amount of info on how I got to this point here. I have a lot to get done. I need to remove the cage from this chassis at this point because I need to finish the other parts that go on here to complete this cage work. Uh, I need to do that and then I need to finish weld it and at that point I'm going to be able to call this cage done and we can move forward. So that's something that I absolutely want to get done as soon as possible. From there, we're going to continue with the forged carbon fiber process. Hopefully I can have most of the other parts done by the next video because we'll be at under 60 days by the time this video comes out. And then by the time you guys see the truck the next time, we'll be getting close to only having around a month left, which is just going to get eaten up by the amount of work we have to tackle as well as just real life things that take away from being able to work on this all the time. As of right now, when I'm filming this, I don't know how this cowl mold came out, 
hopefully I was able to show you that that was a success. Fingers crossed because it's a lot of 3D printing time to get the molds completed. And then it's a lot of time to get the molds loaded and then put them in a vise and then wait 24 hours before you get to see the results. I tried some new things with the mold for the cowl. Hopefully that paid off. It's a lot of learning process, mainly on the how to build the proper molds because there's a number of things to take into consideration as you do it. It's not necessarily just the simplest thing to bang out. So lots to learn, having a lot of fun doing it though. On Sundays, I've been rebooting my STL Sunday show, which is a live show where I do 3D modeling, usually focused on 3D printing, but not always 100% about 3D printing. And a couple of weeks ago, the episode that I did was on this custom dash that you see in the chassis now. This one was a modified dash from a model that Westmade did for a much more scale accurate commando. Uh, I took it, modified it, and made it fit into our chassis. This is just an FDM print of it. The final version may end up being resin printed. We'll see exactly uh, how that goes. Right now it's just setting in there. Everything fits so well and so tight that everything just clips into place or you know, even just pressure fits for now. We still have to do figure out a method for my hood closure and a number of other things. What do you guys think we should do for some scale details? I don't need a lot of scale points uh, above what we're going to do. I need to finish out the interior, uh, some things like that, but I don't need a lot for scale points. I've got options uh, for here and there. I really don't plan on doing driver or passenger figures because I don't think I'll need those points, but I am thinking about doing a 3D style engine because I can easily mount it up here, kind of cover the front of the servos and the winch over the top should be pretty easy. And uh, I've got a really just easy opportunity to gain some 3D printable scale points that are gonna look pretty good in there. So let me know what you guys think there. I'm thinking LS style, that seems best. LS the world. Put your suggestions in for any of the other scale things you think I should handle and how we should finish up a number of the, you know, real detail parts of this truck. Like I said, there's a lot left here, but the major mechanical things are really starting to come together. Class two though, as I mentioned, this truck unchanged visually from what you see here since the last time that we talked about it, a lot to do. However, what I did work on since then was cutting up some axle housings. This is a front housing from a VS410 Phoenix, the F10 portals, just like I've got on the front of this truck, just like I have on the front of this truck. But like I said, I'm gonna be running this in class three. So what we'll be doing is removing the regular rear portal axle when it's time to run class three, and we'll be running a custom rear axle. So what we have here is a stock rear axle, and then the outside ends of the front axle that I cut off will slide onto this housing and we're going to do a custom truss for it to hold all these pieces together. We'll also do like some epoxy and pinning to keep the tubes help locating the ends of the axle. We're gonna be able to make this thing super strong. I have zero concerns. I did this because I need a four link mount because I'm gonna run servo on axle and I want it centered, you know, mainly because of the whole four link reason servo on axle, all of that. Lots of reasons why I went this route and I think that it's going to work out really well. I've got my plan for the axle shafts. We're gonna cover all of that in depth, hopefully next week. We're gonna be swapping that out because I don't want the extra weight of a servo and links and all of that stuff, you know, having to be carried around while on course in class two when it's unnecessary. There's, that's a lot of weight. There's no reason to carry around all of that weight for no reason and uh, this is just gonna be a super simple swap. I just have another ready to go rear axle. I may do links and everything attached to this because I may play with the wheelbase for class three a little bit more. Um, and it's just as easy to take the links on and off of the chassis side as it is the axle side. So may go that route, we'll see. Still a little bit left to do, but this will be a very nice centered steering four linked axle mounted servo rear axle for this one done. But people have asked why not just lock it out? It's absolutely just because of all of the weight and everything. There's no reason to carry around a bunch of extra weight, especially, you know, sits up on top of the axle, all that. No need, get it out of there. Only put it in when I need it. Super simple, easy to do, but it's one more thing to get knocked off the list.
this truck is the one that's definitely going to be in need of scale points. So you guys will have to drop your recommendations for this one, which will be uh, much more in depth. I'm likely gonna do an interior cage to hopefully uh, support the inside of the carbon fiber hard body. Um, that's, that's high on the list. Beyond that, I'll probably do a very simple bare bones, just to the letter of the rule interior. And then I'm kind of out of ideas. So drop your suggestions below and hopefully I can pick the best ones, the easiest ones. Hopefully I can pick the easiest ones and get those done. Two more weeks and you'll see more info on these trucks. I'm looking forward to it. I'm super excited for this whole event. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the video series. It's way heavy tech on some of this stuff, I know. Maybe it's not for some of you, maybe the rest of you enjoy it. But if so, hit the like button, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded. Check back again in two weeks for more build progress on both of these rigs. As always, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next one. So quick update on the truck since when I filmed that video was like this weekend. But here is how we have it sitting currently. We do have the cowl in place in the forged carbon that worked out pretty well, except I did end up with one area that was underfilled in the mold here. But I have a plan on how I want to try and patch that. Not a huge deal. Also, you can see that I've completed the B pillar area on both sides of the cage. And then I basically went through and finish welded the cage, almost. I forgot to put in my rear bumper, but uh, so I have to pull it back out and get that <laughs> welded in. And that's one more thing on the list. A couple of other little things. I've got some changes planned for little things like the side panel design. I've got another set of acrylic test pieces cut try and get those in the carbon is looking really good super happy with the look this is just wet sanded like you saw in the video it's got a little bit of a mat i may sand it to a higher grit you know like 1000 or 2000 and then maybe just polish but i don't plan on clear coating this just because i don't want it to flake or anything like that over time i'm just fine with this look but a little bit of a polish may be all we do Probably gonna move on to this next. Hopefully I can have that done in the next couple of days. Also last week on STL Sunday, I went through the design that I've got planned for the front bumper of this. I haven't talked about it too much in a while, but the front of this chassis will get cut off here, just, just past the grill here. The grill will actually go further down and be a little bit more complete than you see it here. But, um, I did the actual bumper design, how I plan to do that. You can see that whole live video on the channel. I'll link to it in the description or I'll try and throw up a little screenshot here. Beyond that, the dash that I didn't really show too well in the video is in place. It's just with the, uh, the windshield frame is just taped on right now, but the dash is in there. This is just, again, an FDM placeholder. We still have to get details done and I do hope to get this resin printed and whatnot little little details there um not a lot else has happened since the video but other than like the finish welding and things like that oh i mentioned in the video that i wanted to build myself a better tube notcher and i did that as well everything on this still going well Let's hope that it continues but that's it for the uh, bonus ending of this week's video see you guys in two weeks